G'day all, welcome to another tutorial on an IEEE 754. Today we're looking at 64-bit doubles. Uh, so what we're going to do is have a bit of a look at the bit pattern, then we'll convert a number, and after that I want to write a little C++ program to print out the bit patterns. So that's going to, you know, really help if you're a C++ programmer and you want to check uh, if you're getting the right bit patterns for 64-bit doubles. Okay, so the 64-bit double is pretty similar to the 32-bit single or float. Uh, there's three different parts, or sort of four different parts, there's an implied part here. But uh, we've got the sign bit, then we've got an exponent, and we've got the mantissa. So the exponent field this time has 11 bits, and you can figure out the bias if you want. That's going to be 2 to the power of 11 minus 1 minus 1 which gives us 1023 as our bias. Uh, the implied integer part is exactly the same as the implied integer part to a single, but the mantissa is 52 bits wide, so 64-bit doubles can represent much larger and much smaller numbers with more accuracy. Okay, in a similar way to the singles, uh, exponent fields of all zeros and all ones mean special things. So to represent positive zero, or just zero, uh, if your whole bit pattern is nothing but 64 zeros, then that's what you've got, positive zero. Uh, if the sign is a one, then you've got negative zero. Uh, or you can have some bit in your mantissa, and the rest of the values are zero, that's going to be positive to normal. Uh, or you can have negative to normal by flipping the sign bit. There's also positive and negative infinity, and there's nands, or not a number, is available as well. Okay, so let's move on to converting uh, yeah, a decimal number to its 64-bit double bit pattern. Uh, here I've drawn out all 64 bits, including the implied mantissa bits here in red. And the conversion technique that I'm going to use here is almost exactly the same. Uh, but we will go through a slightly more accurate way to, to get the mantissa bits afterwards. Okay, so first up, 18.9 is a positive number, so the sign bit is going to be 0. If 18.9 was negative, if we were talking about negative 18.9, then you would just put a 1 there in your sign bit, and for the remainder of the algorithm you could pretend that the uh, number was positive. But right here we've got a positive number, so the sign bit is 0. Next up, the exponent. So the exponent field is 11 bits long, and once again, we're looking to represent our number as 1 point something 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 multiplied by 2 to the power of exponent. So we want it in normalized form. There's got to be a 1 here, just left of the radix point, uh, unless we're talking about a denormal number, which we're not in this circumstance. So this trick here, the log trick, uh, you can only use for positive numbers. So 18.9 is a positive number. If you take the log in base 2 of 18.9, uh, using the, um, you know, ln 18.9 divided by ln 2 will give you 4.24. Uh, so the integer part to that is the exponent that we're looking for. It only works with positive numbers, and if you've got negative numbers, it's going to give you the wrong answer, uh, unless your number happens to be an exact power of 2. Anyway, we're not going to go into that, just be careful. Uh, but basically what this means is that our number in normalized form is going to look something like positive 1.18125 multiplied by 2 to the power of 4. You see, so I just divided 18.9 over 2 to the power of 4. Uh, which means that our exponent field has to represent the value 4. And like we said before, it's got a bias of 1023, so 1023 plus 4 gives us 1027. And that's the number there, 1027, that we've got to represent with our 11-bit exponent field. So that's the bit pattern just there for 1027. A 1, a bunch of zeros, and a couple of 1s on the end. And that's our exponent field. Okay, so the implied mantissa bit is really easy. It's going to be a 1. Yeah, this number is nowhere near denormal. It's absolutely massive compared to a denormal number. So... Yeah, that's a 1. The other way that we can tell that the implied mantissa bit is a 1 is just the fact that the exponent field has something other than 0 in it. Alrighty, so so far with these um, three little parts, the sine, the exponent, and the implied mantissa bit, we've explained positive 1, and the multiplied by 2 to the power of 4, and it's the mantissa's job, 
to explain the 52 bits or to explain with its 52 bits uh, 0 0.18125 and once again we can use exactly the same algorithm as the uh, single precision uh, we just continuously multiply these fractional parts by 2 and record the whole part as our digits as we go subtracting one digits if we get them so first up we do uh, 0 0.18125 multiplied by 2 gives us 0 0.3625 uh, the whole part to that is obviously a zero, so we record that as our first digit in the mantissa, and we don't have to subtract anything from that. Then we bring the 3625 down here to the uh, next number to be multiplied. We multiply it by two, which gives a 0 0.725. Uh, that's another zero as the mantissa bit right there. And we bring the 0 0.725 down to uh, multiply. Uh, this time, 0 0.725 divide, uh, multiplied by two gives us 1.45, and the whole part to that is obviously a 1, so we record a 1 as the mantissa digit. We subtract that 1 from, uh, from 1.45, and uh, yeah, we continue multiplying by 2. So 0 0.45 by 2 gives us 0 0.9, 0 0.9 by 2 gives us 1.8, etc, etc, etc. So after a little while, uh, we'll get 0 0.8 again. Uh, we've already seen 0 0.8 just here and we'll get it again. So that's actually a recursion that we found. These will be the mantissa bits uh, up until that recursion. So 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. But at that point, at the point that we get exactly the same uh, number in the number column, we know that we've got a recursion and the bit pattern is going to repeat forever and ever. So we also know that in uh, IEEE 754 we can't represent this number exactly. It's going to be rounded. Um, but we can find the uh, first occurrence of 0 0.8 just here and those four digits 1100 0, 0, that's going to be the repeating pattern 1100 0, 0, 1100 1, 0, 0. Uh, so we don't need to uh, continue performing our multiplications by two we know the repeating pattern so I've just filled out the rest of the mantissa really really quickly and that's our bit pattern really yeah zero for the sign We've got our exponent there, a 1 for the uh, implied mantissa bit, and then uh, all those bits there for the uh, rest of the mantissa, with a 1100 0, 0, repeating forever. Okay, so yeah, here's something that's that you've really got to be careful with. If you convert, uh, say, a mantissa of, um, or the number you're trying to convert is 1 over 3, and you're using a pocket calculator, You'll notice after a while, particularly with, uh, say, 64-bit doubles, or maybe you're ex uh, converting extended precision, which is um, an 80-bit double, or an 80-bit extended precision float, uh, you'll notice that there's some strange numbers that appear on the right-hand side, and they slowly begin to march leftwards. Yeah, so if we continuously multiply 1 over 3 by 2, using the same algorithm from the previous page, uh, we should get 0 0.333 recurring, then 0 0.666 recurring, then 1.333 recurring. And at that point there we should, you know, subtract the 1, recording a 1 as the digit in the mantissa, and keep going. Uh, but eventually we'll get some really strange things. We won't get this pattern of 0 0.3 recurring, 0 0.6 recurring, 0 0.3 recurring, 0 0.6 recurring forever. Uh, eventually this starts to happen. So I'm not sure how many times I actually multiplied it out, but after a while, I get 0 0.3332774409, which is completely wrong. Um, these strange digits here that have come in on the uh, right-hand side and are steadily marching leftwards to become, you know, incorrect bits in my mantissa, uh, they're the result of rounding errors. Okay, so we want to avoid doing that and Sometimes it, it might be better to um, represent your number or your fractional part as an actual fraction. So say we're converting something like 0 0.67 to its mantissa bits. Uh, it might help to write that out as 67 over 100, which is the meaning of uh, 0 0.67. You know, that's what it means as a fraction. And multiplying the numerator by 2, so multiplying 67 by 2, each round, and uh, every time you get something greater than 100, you record a 1 in your mantissa, and you subtract 100 from it. Uh, every time you get something less than 100, you record a 0 in your mantissa, and you don't subtract anything. So this is an identical algorithm to the previous 
you know, way that we did it. But instead of writing out your number as, you know, a decimal point, if you write it out as a fraction, then you don't run the risk of, um, you know, running into those rounding errors. Uh, if you find exactly the same numerator twice, then you've found a recurrence, and you can fill the remainder of the mantissa with those repeating digits. Okay, something else that might come up is if you're trying to convert a number that's got uh, recurring digits, so say we're trying to convert something like 0 0.675, where the 675 is recurring forever, something like 0 0.675, 675, 675, dot, 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 forever and ever and ever. Uh, the fraction that you'll be looking at there is uh, 675 over 999. Yeah, so keep multiplying 675 by 2, and every time you get something greater than 999, record a 1 in the digit of the mantissa, and uh, keep going. Yeah, or as another example, uh, 0 0.3 recurring is uh, the same as 3 over 9 as a fraction. And once again, you just continuously multiply the 3 by 2. And you'll find using this method that you never get into those, uh, you know, that rounding problem. It just doesn't come up. Yeah, so this might be a better way to do it. Okay, so that's enough of the slides. If we come over to Visual Studio, this is Visual Studio 2012, the uh, desktop edition, since I'm running uh, Windows 7. But I wanted to just write out a small program to um, display the bit pattern to a double. So I've, I've made a start. I'll just zoom out. That's all it is at the moment. I included yeah, a few things. Okay, so we're going to make a function that displays the bit pattern to a double that we pass it. I might just call it print double, something like that. Uh, it's going to return void print double and double d, just like that. Um, okay, so. What we want to do is unsigned long long i equals d. Uh, so that right there, unsigned long long, is a 64-bit unsigned integer, which is exactly the same size as a double. A double is 64 bits. But what, what I've just written here is actually a cast, and that's not what we want. We don't want C++ to cast it. We want C++ to pretend that the exact bit pattern that we've passed it in this double, we want it to pretend that that's an integer. So we can do that by, um, you know, just making a pointer to that address, an unsigned long, long pointer to that address, and taking that result. So that now is going to take the exact bit pattern of D, the double D, and store it in an unsigned long, long. Okay, then we want to count backwards through all of the bits. We want to print the uh, sign bit right on the left-hand side, so we're sort of counting backwards through all of the bits, starting from uh, bit 63. And what do we want to do here? Uh, I, that way, that way, um, J, ampersand, 1. Uh, yeah, we want a Boolean AND each bit, one after another, with the value 1. What's this thing's problem? It doesn't match these operators. Yes, it does. Silly C++. Ah, oh, what is he talking about? Uh, yeah, let's see how we go. Just click play. Okay, so that's our bit pattern right there to that number. It's a little unclear. Let's just... Um, I might put in some spaces as well. Uh, if j equals 63, so if we've just printed the sign bit, then we want to print out a space, else if j equals um, 52, print out a space as well. So this will put a space just after the sign bit, and it'll put another space just after the exponent. Let's have a look. Yeah, there we go. So that's a little easier to read. So that's the sign bit there over the left-hand side, followed by the 11-bit exponent, I hope. Let me have a look. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yeah, 11-bit 11 exponent, and then that's followed by the mantissa. So this is just a little program here to print out the uh, bit pattern of a double, just in case you want to you know, check if you're getting the right answers. So if we try some, some negative number, maybe 93.4. 
and hit play. Yeah, so that's the bit pattern to negative 93.4. Good stuff. Anyway, that's about all I wanted to say on double precision floats. And uh, next time I think we might go through exactly, you know, some of the amazing tricks that we can do with um, floating point values now that we know the exact bit pattern that they're stored in. Um, these tricks are incredibly powerful for optimization and uh, really good fun, very interesting. Anyway, thank you for listening. Have a good one.